Let's bring in Rob Lacazio, founder and CEO of AI software company LivePerson, which develops customer care solutions and chatbots. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the chatbots. So before we get into <laughs> that part of the business, um, we have a lot of investors, retail, professional, and otherwise watching. What do investors need to know about AI with all this talk going on in this AI race that seems to be unfolding? I mean, the race is a space race. It's, uh, it's as big a technology change as the PCs in the 80s and the internet in the 2000s, the impact on AI now with ChatGPT and we're seeing large language models, um, the world's going to change. Like the way we do business, the way we have our personal lives. We saw government, Ted talking about uh, uh, government. It's the world is changing rapidly now. Yeah, it certainly is a rapidly changing world. You're in your quiet period right now. You have earnings coming up. So you can't talk about your specific business. However, you can talk to the broader yeah. business community, other CEOs, other CIOs, CTOs, and things like that. What would you tell them that they need to know about AI right now beyond the headlines that we have here on CNBC and other outlets? You think about it, eight weeks ago, uh, ChatGPT was released, and we're talking about Google maybe not being around. And when you think about the impact on any business, whether you're a telco or a bank, uh, if you're a CEO and in February you haven't thought about your business plans changing, uh, you may be left behind. And I'm not just saying that as a, as a shock to the system, but there'll be new companies born out of this. And, and the ability to generate different business outcomes with it will change business forever. All right. You've been in AI for a couple of decades. Yeah. Um, the congressman kind of compared it to another industrial revolution, the steam engine, which was a dramatic shift in industry and, and American and global life. Can this AI ha can have the same level of impact? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest part is that we can take data in our organizations, the Internet data, and we can basically ask questions to a machine and get outcomes. And, and we've been dreaming of it. We, we wanted Amazon Alexa to do this for us. and We wanted Siri and they never got there. And the ability to ask the machine, you know, help me with something, uh, generate something for me new, and to be able to do that with data and these, these new models, these large language models, um, is really going to change the game for everything we're doing in our personal lives right. and business. So we're, we're hearing that AI is going to change industries and even possibly create new jobs. What are these new jobs? Are they all tech jobs and coding and things like that? Are there other jobs that could potentially open up? Look, there's going to be people that are going to have to, they call tune the models. And so when you take data and you, and you let the model look at it and give outcomes and you can speak to the machines, you need someone to look at the data and, uh, and annotate it and change it. There's going to be a lot of job loss and changes, but that's going to open up opportunities. Um, but I think we're just in like the first inning of that. Even us, we're looking at how do we use this technology and, and we look at all these different companies out there in the world. I'm thinking about like how am I going to bank differently? You know, and what does a banker, personal banker look like with this type of technology? So, I mean, you see it in kind of changing the way we do things on a consumer level first or on an industry level first. Will it, will it change the way some industries operate, how they hire, how maybe they even source the raw materials? Or are you saying it's going to be we're going to see the biggest impact when I go to the bank or I go to the grocery store? I think it's definitely going to hit the consumer is how do consumers do things that are normally hard in their life, uh, booking travel, changing something in the world. Uh, you know, insurance or whatever, I think it's going to change there. But what the big impact is that if I'm a marketer, let's say working at a telco, I could go into the machine and say, generate me a, um, a new campaign, an advertising campaign, create pictures and copy and video. And it can, the machine will generate that based on the data set that says really? this is the best way to do it. Versus today we have to get a whole team of people and we have to build all that. The machine can generate that now. And that's the most exciting thing. Let me ask you a question. You obviously create AI software that interacts with people. Yeah. How do we know the AI is going to create things that are going to appeal to people? I mean, people obviously have a sense of uh, culture and trends and, and different things. Will the AI be able to learn all those things? It is. And that, that's, that's what ChatGPT did was through natural language. You just talk the way you do and I do. The machine is interpreting that and talking back to me in a way. And sometimes it hallucinates, uh, actually. And, and that's a really? term we use, that the machine gives you an answer that seems so perfect but because you're not an expert in that topic, you don't know it's not perfect. So you can see it today in, in, what, in what's happening. And so you have to be careful with it. And, and, and there are things in guardrails, especially bringing it to companies, that I think if we're going to use it in the right way, we have to bring the guardrails. And, and that's what the next step is. Speaking of guardrails, I, you have a T-shirt on. Yeah, you want to talk about your nonprofit. It's called EqualAI.org. Give us a quick sense of what EqualAI.org is about and why it's needed. So four years ago, I co-founded a nonprofit uh, with a woman called Marion Vogel who worked with President Obama 
on doing uh, bias training programs for federal government. And we sat down and said, look, if AI becomes pervasive, which it's about to become, um, there'll have to be guardrails with it. And so this organization works with government. She's on the, uh, on the committee that uh, helps President Biden look at this stuff and private industry and figure out how to use this technology so it's not racist, so it's not biased. And that's, she's created a framework, and that organization's done it for everybody. Really interesting conversation. Again, similar to the congressman, I think we're really just getting started with this conversation. We appreciate you so much for being here. Thank you for your insight.